Right, <clears throat> so with one of the rear hubs now all painted up and back together, we can start to put the brakes back on. So we've ordered some uh, rear shoes from eBay, they're about £30 with the spring kit. The original springs looked okay, but you know, if you're going to swap the shoes out, how much do you trust a uh, rusty spring? Shoes and and our bag with all the springs in it. Come back. I've done a few pairs of rear shoes in my time and they all seem to be the same, pretty much. Okay. So you get an extra set of pins. So four caps. Two pins, two pins. Uh, for some reason, you get an extra bag of pins and washers. It's another bad thing, I suppose. You don't get an extra set of springs, weirdly, but you do get the extra pins and washers. So, not going to knock it. I'll take that. is that side back on. As you can see I've painted the chassis since I've had the uh, hub off in black. Now the hub's gone back on, shock's back on, shock's fine, bushings are all fine, brake lines are fine. So we'll go and we'll see if we can get this hub back on. I have to find an angle for the camera that actually works. Bear with me. Right, make sure we get our orientation right. So the square cutouts go at the top on the piston side. The spring with the gap in it goes at the top. The shorter spring goes at the bottom. And then obviously your springs, pins and washers go through the shoes. So let's see if we can get this one back on. Down this as a mechanic somewhere again. What the hell are you doing? You're doing it the really awkward way. And I think I am. Let's get a screwdriver and try it. I hate doing these little things. I had one of these ping off in it in the right near the eye once. So yeah, don't ever get right in front of them. Okay. New shoes on. 
The only problem is the adjuster, which is down here, they're notorious for sticking and this one is stuck. This is what pushes the brake pads further apart. Where are my hands there? When the brake shoes start to wear, you can nip up that adjuster and it makes sure the pads wear evenly. But uh, mine's stuck, so I've lagged in a bit of WD and we'll try and free it up in a couple of days. Now, the real test will be to see if we get the screw holes lined up and the studs. And of course it doesn't want to go on because it's got a little lip on the top edge of the drum as they always have. So, let's give it a whack with a trusty rubber mallet and see if we can get it on. No. at the edge of that pad and as they're brand new pads I don't really want to rip the shit out of them to get them on so it looks like we're gonna to have to try and slacken off that adjuster on the bottom whilst it's only out a tiny bit I suspect that tiny bit of a breakthrough is enough now the adjuster on the back for the brake isn't actually a bolt it's square in profile which makes it really awkward because I've got nothing that goes to a square. All your sockets go to hexagonal heads. An adjustable spanner doesn't have enough grip to turn it when it's seized up. The spanner just wants to slip over it. I hate adjustable spanners. Um, I don't know, if you haven't got the right size spanner, just get the right size spanner. However, interestingly, the back, as in the attachment for a, I think it's a quarter inch socket, is exactly the right size. Hmm, so by using an extension bar for a quarter inch with a step up to a half inch and a 10 mil spanner, a 10 mil spanner goes onto that half inch perfectly. So it can go on that way and we're basically using the socket in reverse. Rather than using this end, we're using this end. I've just tried it and it works, hooray. As someone once said, if it's stupid and it works, it isn't stupid. So, that's now with the adjuster all the way down, which has hopefully given us enough clearance to get this disc back on, but I'm not sure it has. Disc drum, you know what I mean. It's that lip on the drum, you know? They naturally get a lip on them from the wear. Which isn't so bad when you're taking them off, because if the shoes are knackered, you don't care what you do to the shoes. You just stick a screwdriver behind and lever it off. The problem is, however, when you put brand new shoes on, I don't want to drive this thing home and then find out it's ripped all the face of the shoes up. That would be pointless. So, let's give it a tap with a mallet and see if we can drift it on gentle-like. Of course, trying to do it in this confined space, I've got 12 inches between this drum and the wall next to me. I took it off with the whole drive shaft removed, which is what I should have done for fitting, but there we go, live and learn. So I can't really see to line the studs up, so I'm having to sort of bend down, try my best to line the studs up, and then give it a whack. Pads. 
business. So I took a Dremel with a grinding wheel on it and just took around the inside of that drum face and just ground that ridge down a little bit and uh, there we go, it's on. Turning the drill into reverse apparently helps. The amount of time it takes to get a little bit of copper slip on those, you know, somewhere down the line, you're going to wish you had, even if it's not me. For all I know, I'll never take this drum off again. Someone else will do it. And they'll be glad I used copper slip. Right, so the drum spins freely. So if I yoink on that handbrake, it should stop it. My handbrake isn't actually connected, so I'll have to sort of do it from around the back here. Uh, let's test this properly. That's what we forgot. Tool. There's a small pin that goes through here, which holds that handbrake lever in place. And I'd feel pretty stupid if I put it all back together and forgot to put that pin back in. So let's go and find that pin. Back on. Yeah. I pull the handbrake just nice and tight. It doesn't spin. When I let it off, it does. So that one is done. I can stick a wheel back on that now. Get it off the uh, jack, or in my case, two bricks, and then go and do the other side. All right. Let's get it done. I have given this wheel a quick lick of paint just to see how it came out. They're covered in old paint, so they probably need to be shot blasted and then re-sprayed. But um, I've just given, I've rubbed them back and sprayed them in like a, um, like a gunmetal colour, which matches the hubcap reasonably well. Obviously they need new tyres, but for the time being, Other than painting in the leaf spring on that side, 
that is that corner pretty much done. It's nice to finally feel like you're getting somewhere when you've got a project of this size and all these bits to do. It's very easy to get lost in it and never ever feel like the end is in sight. But um, yeah, we are getting there. Also, as you can tell, the head's off. Uh, there's a good reason for that. If you remember I said in the previous video that the engine was only cranking over halfway. We are only turning it with a ratchet and it was getting halfway and it was getting stuck. And it was quite stuck when I got it. I had to sort of crack it off if you like when we first got it. Um, so I got one of those little boroscope things, endoscope, attachment for your phone, about £15. Pounds. Came on a slow boat from China but I got it. I pulled the plugs, had a look down inside the bores. Three of them were okay, and cylinder number one, that one on the end, um, was an absolute state. It was full of rust, it had two big rust rings in it, there was things growing in it, it was just absolutely horrific. I'll insert a picture or two of what they look like now. As you can see, pretty filthy. And the guy who sold it said, yeah, engine should be fine mate, yeah, it's been stood for a while, but it should be fine. Of course, like I say, he had the inlet manifold off, so all the moisture has got into that cylinder and it's just completely corroded it. So now, as you can see, those pistons look nice and shiny. I had a fun job scrubbing that back. It took me uh, about four hours to scrub them all up, but they are done. And that bore is now reasonably shiny and I've polished up the uh, piston heads. There's some um, marking on them, but like I say, it's uh, you know you're gonna get that sort of thing, unfortunately. But at least it moves, and it's clean. So new head gasket on the way. Um, that's the underside of the head. Again, I've cleaned that up. As you can imagine, cylinder one looks exactly the same as the uh, cylinder would suggest. It was all corroded, full of crap. Um, so I've scrubbed it all back, flushed it out. I still need to check it to make sure they're actually airtight, so I'll flip it upside down, pour some fluid into them, and make sure none of the valves are leaking. The springs are too stiff, you can't just reach underneath and push the, um, and push the valve from the other side. The springs are, too, um, springs are too stiff, otherwise I'll just push them from the other side, get on the back. But I just want to make sure they're nice and clean on the back of the valve where they seal, before obviously committing to putting a head gasket back on and bolting it down because at that point, you know, for something you've forgotten, you're buying a new gasket and that's sort of 15 quid every time, so I'd rather do it once. So yeah, decided to take that apart, glad I did because it was like crap inside. Never try and fire up a car that's been stood for a long time because you don't know what damage you might do to it. And if I did try and fire that car with all that going on inside it, uh, I, I don't know what it would have happened. It would have been um, pretty bad though. So yeah. Get in there. Head gasket's on the way. Get that back on. Water pump on. That's that block pretty much done for them. I can start to put the carbs in, let manifold back on, exhaust manifold. Start to get that done. And then I can start on the other side of the chassis rail. Get that scrub back painted in. As you can see, I've got the other wheel off back there. So that one's undergoing the same treatment as the one I've just done. Scrubbing out the hub, putting new shoes in it, checking the uh, damper and the bushings, all that kind of thing, brake lines, when I'm happy with that, put that back together. And when that's all painted in, that will essentially be that back of the chassis done. And then I can move to the front, repeat the process, get it all painted in. There's a little bit of welding to do on the underside down there. And once that's all done, that'll be the frame done. And then I can put the body back on and actually start the body work. Exciting times anyway. I'll leave it there.